Does anybody have any questions on these? What I hope to do here is um, I've got my key. We're gonna, so if you ask on one, I'll show you the resulting view and then show you how we come about it and project it. Um, due to time constraints and make it look right, I, I don't know that I really want to project a whole bunch of them, but I can certainly show you where I have come from. Uh, so is there anything on the first sheet? Can you do number two? Number seven. <laughs> number seven? Huh? Um, I heard, let's start towards the top. I heard number two first. So Please. I'm going to go to number two first. Please. Let's just go through there. But number two. Okay. Keep in mind we're doing a half section here. So here's the resulting view. In essence, we're coming through this top piece. We've got a channel that's shown by this hidden line. This is a, a belt flywheel, belt ribbon. So the belt comes right through here, going around the circle. So this is holding it in. Maybe we have a structural arm that can, can brings us down into the hub. And then the hub goes, here you see the front of it, comes here and comes back out. So this is going to be a section view. So first we draw the section along this line. Then we show things in the background afterwards. So if you're wondering where this line comes from and that line comes from, it is seeing this right here coming around on both sides. Okay? That's both of these, that one and that one. So that's your resulting view. The other side gets an outline only. No hidden lines in this section. So you're just giving the outline. Remember, you have described the interior up here. So this is just the outline view. So you see these two kind of top pieces coming around. You got the hub, and this is the bottom, or the bottom of the channel right there. So that's your resulting view. Is there any questions on where these items come from? Andy, since you asked for this one, I'll uh, do you have, like this front component or that? Is any of this? I uh, now that I actually see it, I got it. Okay. Why wouldn't this be a solid line? Because once you look at this right here on the this, you would be looking at it that way with the hood sticking out. Yeah, because no. Why would you have it solid that way? Um, you would. This actually should go right there. Okay. okay. Yes, you should have that also. Okay. Yeah. Let me uh, ask you a quick question. Do you see anything on my number one that you might not have done? Yeah. Okay, what is it? What's that? You curved it. The angle. This right here? Yeah. Why is mine angle? Then we have a convention on that at the end of chapter 10 where we have um, cylinders intersecting cylinders, prisms intersecting cylinders, both positive and negative shapes. Do you remember the rule on that? Uh huh. So should, what should you do on that? You should me measure the diameter and the diameter. If this diameter of this one is less than 25% of this one, project it as a straight line. If it's greater than 25%, then we take the time to project how it actually occurs. So that's the use of those conventions in chapter 10. I think we had uh, four pages on those. Two pages on positives and positives, and two pages on negatives and negatives. You might want to keep that in mind as you move through here because it's not the only one that works like that. All right, so two, how about three? Yes. Yes? Okay. Um, three, in essence, what you have on this one, we're doing an aligned section, right? Oh, I got that one. Okay, so this is an aligned section. You've got your structural items. So in essence, what we've got is we've got a positive cylinder base and then a positive cylinder with a negative cylinder. So there's going to be some shaft or something that goes through here. Now, when this comes up, since we're going to be torquing it, we've got to hold this thing in place. So we've got some ribs. 
right here, here, and here to hold this thing steady. Um, in essence, your projection is fairly straightforward. Okay. We're in rock coming through the base. We come up through here. Again, these all have mass in a circle. Okay. This is a structural item. We draw the structural item in full. We do not section line it. Keep in mind we're taking this one, swinging it down to the quadrant location and doing it also. And now, can I section line these areas right here? If I want? Yeah. Yeah, what do I do? Change the angle. Yeah, double. Tell what you're facing. So you could section line it. But you're going to double that spacing. Use the same pattern. The author in the text actually prefers that. Myself, I kind of mentioned this, like, I don't know, I think it's six of one, half dozen of the other. Section line goes this way, you did 45 this way, it's wrong. 45 certain height. I'm sorry, say that again. <laughs> what if you do 45 degrees the other way, does it matter? Section oh, on your section lining? Yeah. If you want 45 the other way? No, that doesn't matter a bit. If what matters is you are consistent, because okay. it's the same piece from here exactly. to here. Yeah. This should be the exact same pattern. Your pattern should not switch. If you go 45 or 70 or whatever, okay. that's all applicable. Generally, we want to 45 degrees, 8 inch apart, continuous lines. Okay. Did I answer your question, Amy? Yes. <coughs> Four? Five? Six. Yeah, you should be six. <laughs> six, right? Yeah. Okay, six is a little bit tricky, but you do have the lines to give it to you. Just keep in mind as you come through it, let me just kind of throw the projection out here. Is that in essence what you've got is these these two pieces right here are higher than everything, and then we have a little lower section that comes through right here. This is an offset section. Okay. So we're gonna bend the cutting plane line to pass through critical areas. So really what this thing's done is to show this. Okay. That's really why it's done. Um, and then since we're coming through, we thought, ah, oh, let's grab the hole. Might as well, right? Okay. So this is the whole section. I'm assuming that's okay. Remember, do not project the bend in the cutting plane line on an offset section. So there should not be a line like right in here. Okay. Then we hit this, we're coming up. We're coming through this till we hit this point. And then we go air the rest of the way. This piece does wrap all the way to the center point, as you're seeing that in the background right there. So the distance from there to there is that line that you see in the background, right? Because we're sectioning along here. And then this piece right here, you see it from here to here, or actually the whole way up here. Huh? This, this is the top. <laughs> Missy, did you raise your hand on seven? Uh, no, six. Six? That okay. was Lisa, right? Uh, seven. Seven is a broken out section. Um, I'm going to go with a blank one here. So we're going to do a broken out section. Where do you think we're going to do it? There's no cutting plane line. All we're given is that we do have this projection going, and then there's a short break line right here. So we're sectioning this. Where are we going to section it? And where is that really going to happen? Is it going to be from, I don't know, right here? <laughs> is it going to be right here? Is it going to be right here? Where are we going to do it? To the right and up. Because cause we're ripping this thing, right? We're basically taking this and ripping this chunk off, but how deep are we going in? Are we coming right to here? Are we coming right to here? What needs to be described? The circle. The circle. Okay. You're going right here, right? That's where you're going. 
this is the part that needs to be described. Okay. Okay. Is this a positive or a negative cylinder? We don't know. Okay. The section view will tell us. So in essence, if you do it, this is a cylinder that lines up with these. Okay. So this is a solid piece that was drilled out this way. This one's drilled out this way. Okay. So in essence, this is solid, that's solid, I'm here. This is all in the background. You're seeing this guy back here. So the way I see it, these turn out to be J's. Like such. You don't have it going the other way on the outside part? No, no, because we're going to do it bad. here. That's this thing that, was a <laughs> that you see in the background. Okay. Oh. That's what, okay, that was confusing. Okay. Gotcha. We would call this a flange. Usually this is an end piece that would bolt on the devices. Gotcha. Or use clamps or something to hold. Would you do your would you do the your cutting plane line? Nope. You don't want to do that one. So no. Okay. On eight. I do want to point out one thing because it, it's a lot of people seem to miss this when I hand this worksheet out. This has two sections on it. You're doing an aligned section as shown here. The aligned section pops up over here. You are doing a revolved section right here. Two sections on this one. Oh. Okay. You want to do it? Hmm? <laughs> I was like, you want to show us? Sure. Sure, so let's, let's kind of go through it. So, I got all my lines here. Okay. It's going to be this whole object because I'm going to swing this down. We see it right here so we get true size. So, from, let's just take it from here to here. Am I on rock or air? Rock. Okay, and that lines up with this, right? Yep. So this goes to an OBJ, and this gets section line. Okay. Now, I'm coming into this handle right here. These go OBJ. Am I going to section line it? It's been cut in half. Yeah, it's been cut in half, but what is it? It's a web. It's so, but how big is it? It's bigger than the other one. It, it needs to be right. Are we cutting parallel or perpendicular to the long axis? Parallel. 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 Does not get section line. Draw it and pull. Don't section line. And we come through this portion right here, which we see right here. Again, this will all go OBJs. Let me just do them all right now. Okay. Rocker air. Okay. On the top part of this has mass in a circle. Okay. Yes, section line. Same on the other side. Actually, it's a mirror image. Could you section line this? Yes, again, just like we talked about, double the spacing, same pattern. So what's the revolve section? Revolve section is done right here. What do we do with the revolve section? Okay. It's going to occur right here. We will take it to this and then flop it. Right, 90 degrees. It's, you're told it's rectangular. You've got the width of it right here. This gives you the depth. Okay. So what I would do is I'd come out and measure this depth, center it on here, There it is. If I'm going to do this, what else other component do I need to do? Yeah, and you need to name it. 
Yeah, I don't get you. They just took advantage on this worksheet to throw that out there. <laughs> Which I don't disagree with that. All right, anything else on this page? All right, next page is section two. Okay, here we have two full section, uh, one, one full section, one revolved section. First on the top one, folks, please include your cutting plane lines. On a full section, you do need a cutting plane line here in the top view. And if we project down through, in essence, we've got this hub out here that's going to take something. We've got our central out here that has a keyway in it. And then this back piece is kind of knocked out. Okay, this is a structural rib that you see right here. And I think that's it. So you got your front and right views there complete. Now, when you've got your cutting plane line, you can put it in either view, right? You can put it as I've shown here, but isn't it also applicable? If I put it right here, you don't need both of them though, folks, just one. But it could go in either view. It could go in either view. All right, any questions on where I'm projecting any of this stuff? Because here's your original. Keep in mind, you're doing a front view as width and height. You're pulling all your width dimensions from the top view down. You're pulling all your height dimensions from the right side view. And then you're just determining rock, air, whatever. Um, no, yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to show that again. Okay. <laughs> but you're, you're wondering what goes on right here. I got that one. Okay. Yeah. Got that Keep one. in mind, when you project this down, it's a cylinder, right? Yeah, so if I project this high. over and this down, they, I've got really kind of this rectangle that's going on. Yeah. Okay. Now, the thing is, you see this back piece with hidden lines right here that's a little rectangle. Mm -hmm. So that's going to come down here. And then you're looking at the dis distance between here and here, okay? Because this portion has been removed. Yeah. So this guy's gonna come down and over, and there won't be anything right yeah. there. Okay. That, is that what you're asking? Exactly. Okay. This is, again, that's the same as a lot of our drawings. When you're dealing with these cylinders, what do we always look at? We look at these quadrant points, because as we've got cuts around these quadrant points, keep in mind, we're wrapping around those cylinders and so there will be a width change that goes on. Any other questions? I have a question. Sure. So when you have the, the triangular rib that comes across. This and thing where, right here. Okay. Well, and it's also right here. Like you have this right here, but you have the, the fillet here. And when that comes down, and and we're getting like this. Does it is that when you come down like this? Does it show as totally straight cross, or does it have a fillet? The, yeah. Cross? Okay, I see what you're talking about here. Okay. So you see the fillets here, mm -hmm. and notice on this end we also see them, but these aren't really fillets, are they? No. They're it's runouts. Really, they? They're showing runouts. So you got runouts on both sides. Okay, and that's equal to the radius, all of those are, they're all the same. And so what you've got is where that thing comes up, keep in mind it comes up right here, you see it again. Mm -hmm. So you'll project that over, that thing's going to hit somewhere about here, and then it goes down to the arm, I'll put it right about here where I'm coming over and down. Okay. So what it's going to do is it's going to come in, have a little fill it, goes through, ah, dang. Let's see if I can draw this thing correct. There's my straight line run. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got an arm that takes off, so yes, that should be rounded. And this should also be rounded coming in like such. 
on the top. I, I'm kind of butchering this. This takes a pretty good. Let me show you the key here. So it'll go right there, and then this will be rounded also. I think that's what you're asking, right, Cheryl? Yes, it will be. I left mine drawn, you now I kind of put a heat on it, but I shouldn't have done that. I left mine straight so I could see it through the light table. Anything else on this one? Okay, the next one you're doing a revolved one. Okay. Again, folks, does this require a cutting plane line? Yes, it does. It requires a cutting plane line. That should be right up here. Please draw that in. Use your .7 pencil. The big thing here is when you get these sloped ones, keep in mind the thing I really kind of see on this is I'll see the end result of this be drawn like this. Okay, we kind of get caught up in this angle. Keep in mind we're taking a thin slice right there. We rotate it and spin it so it's going to be true size. How do I get this width and that width? How do I know which size they are? Because of the that width. Yeah. Is that width, right? Mm -hmm. This width is that width. And it occurs that you measure that right on that cutting plane line. All right, any questions on how I projected any of that? Let me ask you one question here. When you're drawing your short break lines for this, does your short break line go like this? Or does it go like this? Lisa says the one on the right. Anybody else say the one on the left? How many vote for the one on the right? Okay. How many vote for the one on the left? You got to ask yourself, is it hollow through there, or is there an object through there? If it's hollow, then my break line would look like this. But it's not hollow, therefore it looks like this. So this is not being removed, it just gets thinner. Right? All right, last page. see number two. Oh, come on, guess what number one? Just the octagon. Oh. So you do follow those little there, that yes, you part follow of the those. octagon. Yeah. Okay. You bet, this is a regular polygon. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we need this to be a regular polygon. Remember how you draw that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Circles. Okay. Make yourself a construction circle. Now this one, you don't have to figure out all your settings. All you got to do is draw that circle and bring this these over, and you'll see where you hit the circle. Oh. Okay. But yeah, this thing should be a regular polygon, folks. They expect to be marked off if that these sides don't aren't equal in length. How do you get the square? Well, you already know one dimension right here, right? So you know that dimension also. Square, equal size, circle. I created myself. <laughs> that was way too dense. Um, technically on this also, folks, should this have short break lines? Yes, it should. Okay, you're not going to put them here because we haven't given you space for it. But there it should. Did you say A, B, C? Huh? Did you label them right now? No. No, we're doing them right on. They're revolved so we don't have to locate them or remove. We got to see that on, not a revolve. Two. Three. 
<laughs> three. Okay, now the big thing on three, I want to point out, and I, those of you that have been in my office and have already discussed this, please stay mum. So, in essence, you're giving a front view and a right view. That we're doing remove sections A, B, C, D. What view is in the glass box? What view are these remove sections going to be? Well, it's got to be the top. Be left view. Oh, left view. Hey, look at the arrows. We're pointing left. So, in essence, you're going to have the mirror image of what's going on over here. Now, this center circle that's centered to the in, the big c cylinder, which is uh, this guy and this guy. Okay, that's this one. Okay, that's center to everything. Because you end up doing a lot of them with this one. That's showing to the left here. For your views, it's always going to be to the right. Okay, because you get the mirror image. Now, in essence, how you do this thing is you're going to take an item. For the first part, I would say, is you've got to locate where you're drawing from. So if I'm doing section A, so if you just take a ruler, you're in essence going to find out that you hit this bottom piece that's straight right down over here. So that's that bottom. Then I go and grab my next line and make sure you stay straight. That is this circle right here. Okay. Then I get the top part, which is right there. That is the center. this edge and that edge. Now, the way I would then do this is I'm going to come in and measure how far over this goes. So it's going to end up about right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Now, I would put, if it was me doing this, I would put my circle template or measure this and go to my circle template. Okay. 